Hello everyone, it's Lisa Smith, Kindred Stitcher. Happy Valentine's Day. Uh, it is January 12th, no excuse me, February 12th, 2018 and I'm here for my end of January update and sort of the beginning, middle of February because you know, life gets in the way. So this is when I could break away and get you an update and I thought today I have in my homegrown journal not fancy, not, not a fancy journal, but um, I'm going to show you a, um, a finish from many years ago that I entered into the fair, the first thing I've ever entered into the fair, some shout outs, some finishes, and some whip updates, as well as plans, some stash enhancement, a little bit of what I'm all into, and then a wrap up. So plans for the rest of the month and then next month as well. So let's get started. So today I want to show you a finish that I had from the 90s and it was my first lavender and lace and that was when Krennic was even called Krennic. It was called Bulger I think is how you say it and this is I don't remember the name of this one. It's, she had so many angels and I, I bought quite a few of them. Only stitched a couple because they're huge. And um, I went to a framing class and some people that I, I was in the class with opened up a framing store and I had them make the frame and make the mats and then I laced it. Even back 20 years ago, um, we were lacing things. So uh, this is, I don't know, one of the angels and it is it's stitched on a pink even weave. Um, it's a pink even weave. And it is loaded with beads. And the, the angel is mostly blue and pink. So it looks great on this pink fabric. And the wings I added. Um, I don't know. Sorry for the reflection. I added blending filament. That's when blending filament was kind of a thing. I added it to the DMC on the wings to give it some sparkle. And then the people who did the framing, they just really did a nice job putting the frame together for me. So this is one of the lavender and lace angels and it's huge. It's big. It sits in my bedroom on the mantle of the gas fireplace we have up there. So that's from the way back finish machine. Um, all right, so let's talk about some shout outs. I forgot shout outs last, last time and I think the time before. And I'm just showing you a little bit of my craft room because you guys, a tornado went through here. It's such a mess. Um, and I'll get to that in a second. But shout outs, um, my girl Lori, Lori McCleary, who I met at one of the Acorns and Threads meetups. Uh, she is from Olympia, Washington. And she and I have lived in similar places or in the same town. When we were little, we know some of the same people in the town we live in now, and we have similar jobs. And so here's this like stitching soulmate, if you will, that God put in my path. I'm like, hey, I've got a new friend here, and she lives in the same town. So check her um, channel out. It's called Tex Stylist, T-E-X-S-T-Y-L-U-S-T. -S yes, I'll try and link them in the box below. I've not done that before, but I'll give it a try. Okay, so Lori McClary. Um, Lisa Abbey's Needleworks. Lisa, because you know what? I th how many people on, on Floss Tube are named Lisa? Or Michelle, or Lisa Michelle, or Michelle Lisa. Maybe Stephanie, maybe Nicole, maybe Donna. Um, but Lisa Abbey's A-B-B-E-Y apostrophe S Needleworks. Lisa and I have very similar tastes. Not only do we have the same name, but we're very similar tastes, and she does quilting. And um, I look at her stuff, I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna have to buy that now. So she enables me to buy a few things. She has a great finish of one of the um, Little House Needleworks ABCs. And the one, I think it's Little House, the one that has the hoop scissors and it's got a little um, needleworker at the bottom. She has it on like a shutter and she has some things hanging down. She's gonna put scissors and a couple of strawberries that she made. And I was like, ooh, I think I might have to steal that idea. So check out Lisa, um, Melly Ellie Stitches, M-E-L-Y-E-L-L-Y -L 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 Stitches. Uh, she's adorable. She has um, a lot of 
fun um, interest in some of the little house and country cottage noodle work uh, pieces. Sampler bird, Robin. Uh, so she does some design and finishing. Uh, she has really very pretty pieces. And again, I in, very much resonates with my style. Sherry's Crafty Corner, Sherry. So uh, Sherry is S-H-E-R-R-Y-S Crafty Corner. So Sherry, like the first video, pulls up like that lavender and lace I showed you, boom. Here's the Angel of the Sea. And it's gorgeous, and I stitched that one for a, a friend of mine. Uh, so I was hooked on her stuff because every time she has a video, she shows this gorgeous finish, and it's professionally framed, and she has gorgeous pieces. So check her out. Um, she has a great South Carolina, I think it's South Carolina, oh, I don't know which one it is. I'm sorry if I get it wrong, accent. Uh, and you know what's funny is somebody told me in a video one time, a comment, they said, oh, I love your accent. And I was like, I'm from the west coast of the United States. Pretty vanilla. I don't know that I really have an accent, but okay. <laughs> I was I was laughing because I'm thinking, eh, I'm very plain Jane when it comes to accents. Um, whistle Stop Stitcher. Stitcher. So she has a day job, but her alter ego job is that she has a quilt retreat place that used to be a, a train station. So it's fascinating to look at her work, but also the um, building that they're in. And um, I thought hers was very interesting. And then the last one is Kinder Ramblings. Uh, she's a kindergarten teacher. Oh gosh, I didn't write down your name. I'm sorry. I'll have to look it back up. Um, but she is a lot of fun. So check her video out. Okay, so there's my shout outs and hopefully I'll remember to shout some more people out next week, next month. Let's talk finishes. So my January plans, I had Lila's Studio, oh, 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 wait, oh, here we go, Be Mine. So of course, I don't really have a lot of Valentine's finishes and I saw this and I was all into this. Um, I, I love Lila, uh, Lila's Studio. Her, her designs resonate with me. So I picked up as Weigart, I think this is like antique ivory. I think it's a 32 count. Uh, it's a little bit washed out there. It's got, it has, there you go, some pinks in it. And, but it's a little bit muted. Almost looks like a blackbird design. Quick stitch. Beautiful design to work on. And I am going to, I, I picked up some stuff out of my stash. Put, there's some lace. I'm going to make a pillow finish. I'm going to put this lace on the outside. Oops, sorry. This was stark white. So I took, I dipped this in coffee. I didn't leave it very long, but it went from off white to exactly the color that I wanted it to be. Then I'm gonna put this other lace on the inside. So it'll look like this. Well, a little bit cleaner than that, but you know what I'm talking about, okay? And then the backing is gonna be this Dames of the Needle dried wine. It's sort of a velveteen, velvety. So there's my finish. And so I was going to start working on this, um, but I was digging through my craft room because everybody's cleaning their stash and minimizing and getting rid of things. I thought I have a bunch of quilt stuff. I have blocks of the month quilts. I have things that are half put together. And I realized um, on a Halloween block, a Halloween quilt that I had partially pieced that for years I had unknowingly cut my fabric on a cutting mat that was off. The measurements were off. So I had half my blocks were one size and half were a little bit smaller. And when I pulled it, I thought, oh, that's right. This is a mess. So I decided to make two table runners instead of a quilt with it and gave myself permission to, to not follow my original plan. So when I was working on that, the feed dogs on my machine wouldn't go down. Oh, they went down, but then they wouldn't come back up. And so I'm trying to, you know, I'm messing around with it. I get, I actually needed to clean my machine. So I had a can of compressed air. I'm blowing it out, trying to figure it out. My husband is a master mechanic of heavy equipment. And he's like, oh, I probably can fix that for you. Okay, go ahead. Give it a try. So he's pulling stuff apart. We just have to take one more screw here, one more screw there, and the plastic's coming off. And then I ended up with this. 
This is my sewing machine. <laughs> because the feed dogs wouldn't come back up. So, I bless his heart. He tried, right? And um, might have broke another part. He did break another part. But I, before he started tearing it apart, I said, my caveat is, if this is going to be too expensive, I'm buying a different machine. I just want to buy a new machine. And he was pretty confident he could fix it. And um, the thing is, is that you don't have access to the parts as easily as like a sewing machine repair place. So I went into the local sewing machine place and there's a couple of gals helping some customers and then a guy with a black apron who apparently knows everything and must have gone to school for this because I came up to him and I said, well, I had an issue with my sewing machine and my husband kind of tore it apart. And he goes, well, you know, as soon as you tear that apart, you void the warranty of my seven year old machine. So I'm like, I'm pretty okay with that. Um, but he was really not interested in doing the work. So I'm going to take it back to the place where I bought it. I'm going to visit my sister this weekend and my mom. So hopefully we get that fixed. I wasn't really planning on buying a machine, but we'll see. I'm definitely missing my machine. Like I wanted to finish that be mine. Not going to happen. Unless I can get uh, one of my machines going. I have one that was given to me that Lori said she might be able to help me with. So I'm banking on that. All right, so those be mine. I also spent a couple days. So this is, I told you before, I'm not a person to have rotations, but now that I have plans, I have to do something. Like I had to figure out what months I'm gonna work on certain things. And so I did give myself a few days and worked on Sabrina. So this was the bride conversion, if you'll remember. And I did the one over one skin. I was really scheduled just to do it in January, but I didn't start it until the very end of January. And I really, really, really wanted to get the skin done. Uh, it's a great place mentally to come back to. The next time I want to work on this, I'm just going to, going to go right into the skirt. So she's very pretty. The colors are just, oh. And the fabric is fantasy dyed. Um, Joanna Worrell. Uh, she does a great job. It's a, She does one of a kind, so she doesn't... I mean, she'll do custom orders for you, but she doesn't have a line of fabric that she produces certain colors. She just makes what she wants and sells it on Etsy which is not a bad deal. Might be what I do someday. I don't know. So there's that. Uh, hibernation day. So uh, this is heartstring samplery. And I started on this. I know there's some people on Instagram. Lori's doing it with me. There's some people on Instagram that are doing it as well. And I am a middle starter. So I started in the middle. I could have started at the top. This is a piece of... Um, coffee tea dyed fabric that I made and I don't remember what the base was I'm not sure what I started with but it took the um, stain pretty well this building needs to be filled in here and then when you when I do this bit it's going to be about a third of the way done and the, it just flies by this goes so much faster than, than the skin on Sabrina this is a uh, it's fun to work on but I'm kind of out of the winter mode like I may stitch the top part and leave the rest for the fall when I'm back back into the um, hibernation mode. All right. Um, the next one is Moira Blackburn. Oh, I didn't take this one out of the, the thing. Okay, here we go. Peaceful Garden Sampler. This is one that I got, got off of eBay. So a lot of blues in this and sort of very springy pastel colors. And this is on 40 count platinum. It's very wrinkled, sorry. I had it in my Q-snap. This is so much fun to stitch. I did not want to stop this, but I need to give some other projects some time this, this, uh, this month. Maybe I can get this a little bit better here. It's a little bit dark, sorry about that. Um, peaceful garden, peaceful is my garden, contentment is my lot, and these stitches are tiny. This is one over, no, these are, these are one over two. Little bitty stitches. And that's about a sixth of the way done. So this is a fat quarter, and it will take up most of this. Yeah, so I'll get back to that. I think next month I might get back to that one. Um, and then I had just a quickie. 
early Americans. So I decided when I went to Acorns and Threads, I found this vintage pearl barley. Um, and this, this fabric, I am a Lakeside Linens glutton. It is a 36, no, it's a 40 count. So you see how tiny this is. Like here's my hand, it completely covers it. Um, and then I decided not to do the full um, stitching them all together. I'm gonna put them in, make them in little pillows. I have some Americana type fabric that I'm gonna put on the back and use a Vana tutorial to make probably the little pillows, put them in a bowl. It won't be a dough bowl, it'll be a Hobby Lobby bowl of some kind. But um, this fabric is just fantastic. And this is Molly Pitcher. So the great thing about this, this is just a couple days to stitch it. And you can just pick it up very portable. Um, my husband had to go in for a procedure at the hospital and so I just took this with me and stitched on it. And um, yeah, it didn't take very long at all. All right, you guys. So that is January, January update. February, so I worked a little bit on Hibernation Day in February. I worked again on Sabrina a little bit to finish the skin. Um, I worked on Village of Hawk Run Hollow. So you all have seen this before. This is Village of Hawk Run Hollow. I used my lap stand finally. My husband's like, are you gonna use that thing that we paid money for? And I tried this, the roll of frame. I just need to sit down with the tutorial and try it again. Um, but I did two hand stitching, so I'm trying some different techniques just to see what it's like. And um, I did two hand st stitching because I have a Q-step that's the longer, um, the, my Q-step of choice is like the 9 by 9 I think this is the 11 by 17 But I got this much done, and the colors in this are fantastic. This is a 36 count buttercream, Lakeside Linens buttercream, great color, fabric. And I will work on that a little bit more in February, I believe. Um, I'm not going to be able to get to everything that I had planned probably for February. I might stitch a little bit on every project, but I won't get as many as much time on each one as I want to. I'm really going to focus in the next month. This is something that I did not show you at the last... Um, for some reason, I left it out of the last video, but this is... Teresa Wentzler's Noah's Ark, and this is for my nephew. His birthday's in June. Um, this month, I hope to get the rest of this done and the corners done and four of the blocks. And then the next month, I'm gonna try and get the rest of the blocks done. Um, this is an even weave fabric, and it's just a cream. I've had it for so long, I don't know what, what kind it is. These are one over one. So that little panda, turtles, mink, they're tiny. There's a few specialty stitches, but not too many. But I am gonna try and get this done and get it to him for his birthday this year. And I think that's the one thing, it's a rotation, not really a rotation, but it is, I'm planning to work on some things. And so two things, one, it's helping me pull some of my older work. And when I mean older, some of my whips are, well, I have one that's before 1994. <laughs> it's that old. So there's some things that I'm pulling out to work on and I'm going to try and get a couple done this year and a couple done next year. And I may adopt a couple out. Um, so it's helping me with that. And the other thing it's helping me with is I don't do stitch from stash, but this has helped me plan and kit what I have, figure out what I need, and then spread my cost out throughout the year. So yes, I'm going to buy a few things at, you know, at market when they come out, but it's not going to be, I need everything. <laughs> I might need everything, but I'm not going to buy everything. So it is helping me manage spending a little bit more. So there's that. Um, <clears throat> February is a short month, so I don't know if I can make my goals or not. Hold please. Commercial break brought to you by Chateau Saint Michel Cabernet Sauvignon. Here's one other thing I did not show you last time that I meant to. On Stash Unload, I picked up a couple pieces of fabric, and this is called Alice Cloth. And it is a really pretty, um, it's a plaid, and I plan to, I've got two pieces. I've got one that's this green, green and cream. I'm gonna uh, stitch 
on the white blocks and you can tell it's it's got a little bit of a overstitch over weave I don't know Melanie Smith tell me what the weaving term for that is I'm gonna stitch in the white blocks some pieces out of this book that I showed you before um, it's by Veronique in, in Jinje. I'm sure I did not say that correctly but these are all Christmas motifs and they're small enough that if you pick one or two I can stitch them on the white squares and it'll be a like a tablecloth for an end table in my probably my living room and there will be tw I think they have 20 white squares that I'll stitch and I won't get them all done this year but I love her stuff and it's a great way to put smalls on one piece and use it in a little bit different manner than just hanging it on the wall. The other piece that I got is pink and white. And it's so pretty guys. It's huge. It's like one and a quarter. Um, very soft pink. I got it for a pretty good deal on Stash and Load. The person who sold it to me uh, had, was a smoker and didn't, didn't say it, but that's all right. It, it aired out. It was still usable. All right. So let's talk a little bit. I think I say all right all the time. I'm going to show you some stash enhancement. Hashtag stash, stash enhancement. I have... Um, I saw this on Instagram. I can't remember who I can blame this on. I haven't committed yet to any of the barn series, the hands-on design or the um, little house needleworks. I'm sure I'll probably buy one or two. I'm not. I'm not sure. I want to see what they look like first. But I saw this and I went out, boom, bought it because look at that barn. That is quite the fancy barn, and there's a bakery. Elena G. Uh, I think this is the post office, Lori, where she was stitcher. And the quilt shop for all you quilters, Farm Girl, Linda Joe, Kelly Stadola, everybody who likes to do Chelsea and Priscilla quilters. So these are adorable, adorable. So I bought that. And then y'all know I'm working on, well, let's see, if you watched my last video, and Dale is on this year's whip list. And the picture doesn't do it justice. So, um, Teresa Kitten Stitcher is the designer. Um, this is Andale Big and Beautiful. I think of her instructions, she said that she used vintage pear from Lakeside Linens, and other people used green. Well, I went on to, I don't know, one, two, three stitches site, and I was looking at some colors, and I had. Janine at Acorns and Threads order a fat half because this is a monster pattern of vintage, of, of patina. Yep, 40 count patina. And they sent her vintage patina. And I got there for the meetup and they say, yeah, they, well, they sent vintage patina. They didn't have any regular patina. Take a look and tell me if it's okay. Oh my word. This is incredibly beautiful very light modeling so gorgeous I would say the closest DMC is like 502 it's a light green and it's not yellow green it's more of a blue green but it's not blue it's definitely a green and it is one of the most beautiful pieces of fabric ever I saw this and I was like oh I think she might have had another piece I almost bought it but I'm trying to be good but this is just oh my gosh it's going to be so gorgeous I cannot wait to start it but I think she this one's on deck I have to look at my agenda but I think oh please oh please do, 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 do. oh here's my fancy planner <laughs> January, right? Very basic. Um, I want to say Andale is in March. So next month I'll start at Andale. Oh, this is good enough for me. So there's that. Let's see. 
Heartstring Samplery. V is for Valentine. I may not stitch it this year, but I'll have it for next year. And then Joe was saying these are signed and numbered frames that are very reasonable. You can order them online. So I love red. Red's probably my favorite color. And I'm going to order me some of that. I got this off a of stash and load. Very good price. A little bee action because you know it's summer. I got me some hoity toity. Lori and I are going to stitch this. This is right up her alley in terms of color. This is exactly what she has in her house. But this is so, the colors are so dense. Oh, gorgeous. Long dog sampler. And then Heart's Ease example uh, works. Sojourner. Now look at that. The colors. The colors are fantastic in this one. Um, and this is still available, although I picked this up off of eBay. This is not a reproduction sampler. This is the original work of the, of the um, artist, the pattern maker. And then the last one, I've never seen this one before. Carolina House Designs. Sisters Through Time, it says, I'll have to read it to you, sorry. Sisters Down Through History, join hand in hand, in, hand to hand in line. It is the love of needles, silken threads, and linen fine that binds us all together with threads through time. Wow, very dainty. Silk, stitched in Arvois silk. There's like maybe 10 of them, so it's not terrible. Um, Too many of the going this year, but if I was going to sneak one in, it'd probably be that one. Okay, I'm just looking down at my notes here, you guys. Let's see. So, um, what I'm all into. What I'm all into. Ba -ba -ba. Fabric. Because I can't sew now, I want to. So, I have been out buying project bag fabric. Look at this. Um, Oh, what's the tool? What's the name of this? Gosh, I can't think of it. I just thought of it earlier. Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. Shout it out. Put it in my notes. Tulip pink. That's it. Tulip pink. But look at this little mouse. So cute. And this is the inside of the fabric. Look at the little slugs with the snails. And doesn't this remind you of like something in the 70s? Like, I have my peachy out and I'd have my gel pens and maybe I'd be drawn on it and I'd come up with something like this. Well, maybe not that fancy. And then I found this. This is totally I'm um, into the fractors, I've decided to. I'll show you something else I'm into. This is fine fabric. It's a boutique. And here's the inside of it because I love me some red. Um, Dara English showed me this awesome bag she had in her background in her one of her Instagram pictures so I'm a copycat this is going to be one of my bags and this might be the inside how I decided but this will probably be the inside of it once someday when I get a sewing machine I was raiding my own stash and I found this you guys you coffee glittons out there Is that not awesome? Look at that. The inside of that, some psychedelic coffee fabric. Fuchsia pink. Together. Love it. And I was in the, I don't know, was at Joanne's and they had something on sale. And I found me some superhero fabric. I do love that. And some interior fabric. But look at Wonder Woman. Is it Wonder Woman in the last movie? She is kick butt. She was awesome. Not, not dainty, not. She was bringing people in. And here's some more super fabric, super power fabric. Justice League. And this is going to be the inside of that one. Because, you know, it can't always be flowers. Sometimes you need to have some different stuff. Oh, here's some more. Oy. This looks like Downton Abbey fabric. Here's the inside of the bag. I haven't done a video for a while. I have been buying a few things of fabric here. 
Here's a Christmas fabric. That's really pretty. It's gold. So this is a, a tan and a gold. It doesn't really have sparkle to it. And the inside is sort of the fabric that goes with it. It is pine cones. But it's very, kind of goes with this. It's complimentary fabric. All right, last one. You guys, look at this. Looks like vacation. Do, 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 do. Right? I'm just going to put grandma on top. And the inside of that one. Couch. All right, so I'm all into fabric bags. Fabric for project bags. Um, I'm also all into... Where is my book? Oh, please. Oh, here we go. Here's my all inch pile. This. Y'all don't like to paint? It's kind of a calligraphy and painting together. It's a fractal book, and I got it off of half price books for $3. Um, it gives you the stroke work, it shows you how to lay out the page, it tells you how to, it's really like, kind of like watercolor. Fill it in, how to plan it. Gives you some history. And wouldn't that be awesome if it come up some, with some designs that you could cross stitch. So I'm all into fractors. I am also all into medallia catalogs. So Swan Island Dahlias is in um, near S S S Portland, south of Portland. And there are fields and fields and fields of dahlias of all shapes, sizes, and colors. And they, it's breathtaking. It's so beautiful out there. They have a dahlia show around um, Labor Day. So I'm all into dahlias. And dahlias you can't kill like a rose, right? So they're very low maintenance flowers. I'm all into the wool applique that I see everybody doing. Filter wool applique. And look at that little, look at that little, it's a candle mat or a mug rug. But look at the little peeps in there. This little kit. I got this a couple years ago up north. So I'm all into that. I raided my, my craft closet here, my craft room. And then this, you guys, is a, what do they call this thing? Clamp, sewing clamp, right? So you needle punch it, the bee, and you put it on um, the wool and the yarns used for the punch needle be in the center of the flower and you can put it on your counter decorative super adorable adorbs and then um, the last thing I'm into the Olympics I could watch the Olympics all of the time in fact, in fact this morning when I had to get up I thought I should not have watched the Olympics so late last night. Uh, the downhill skiing I love, the ice skating I love. It's awesome. So I'm all into the Olympics. Uh, let's see, what else? I'm also, I didn't bring them in here, but I'm all into the big Harry Potter picture books. So there's another run where it's an illustrated Harry Potter and it's really kind of for a younger audience, but it's a book in full. But I do love a good picture in a book. I'm an English lit major in, high, in college, so I love books, period, but I especially love something that has great graphics, and so I love those. And I don't, my niece and nephew came to visit, I'm like, you can look and you can touch, but if you touch it, I better be sitting with you. Because I love me the Harry Potter books. Woo! What else? Mmm. I can't think of anything else. I think this is enough. I was really feeling like I needed to get this done. I chatted pretty quickly. Um, for next month, you want to know what's on my agenda for next month? I, could, I guess I could show you the plans. We got to get Noah's Ark working on that this month, Hibernation Day. I'm going to try and get the first Hawker and Hollow block done by the end of the month. Um, the Paula Vaughn with the quilts. I'm going to work on that. I have a good finish in mind for that. I'll probably get about half, if I can get half of that done this month, what's left, I'll be happy. Um, my Mara 12 Days of Christmas, I may park that and not start that till later this year. Then next month, I have a uh, Prairie Schooler um, Prairie Flowers. I'm going to start my Chatelaine, so I have got to get my 
Rule of Fame figured out. And then I'm going to get back to Good Company. I'm going to work on Ann Dale. So if anybody knows how to win the lottery, find a rich relative, something that will let me do this full time, let me know. I'm all in, all ears, and um, look forward to seeing everyone's posts on Instagram and on the Facebook pages. I love your videos. Keep them coming. And y'all have a great Valentine's Day, a great rest of the month, and look forward to spring, which is not very far away. We'll see you next time. Take care.